Everybody stand up for one minute. Just stand up, stand up, stand up. And just stretch straight up into the air. Stretch right up into the air. And wave your hands around. That's fine. And then bring your arms down. And then get them straight back up into the air. And wave them around. And down again. That's marvellous. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you'd just like to sit down, um, I've got a job for you, if you don't mind. It'd be really helpful if you can give me a hand here. So we've got a choice. We can either choose Pink Floyd Money or we can choose ABBA Money, Money, Money is my theme tune. So um, hands up those who would go for Pink Floyd Money. Okay, then. Okay, hands down. Hands up those who would like ABBA, money, money, money. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Um, and I didn't do that because I'm just about to press the button and it will come through the ether. I did that in order to establish my financial credentials. <laughs> I can tell you that that was about a 50-50 split. <laughs> and so that shows you that I am the right person <coughs> to be giving this presentation. <laughs> so this is just a reminder of where we are within a larger environment. This is the NHS English spend. And if you look at the graph over on the left, it's 2010. The green goes up to 2015. And then on the right, we've got blue 2015 to 2021. And if you look at the two horizontal lines, you'll see in the left 1.2, on the right 1.1. And this is actually the average spend. And as you can see, it's going down. So we have to cope within that environment. This is a bit of a, an update as to where we've got to, what we've actually done. And this is what we've done. So we're in year one of a three-year recovery program and the three the reasons that we are in this sort of particular situation locally is because of these areas here so we've got a pfi contract but not only do we have one pfi contract we've got two pfi contracts and the cost management of these two so these are a large drain in our resource carolyn earlier spoke about agency control we've done some fantastic work in that we can do more um, we've increased the budgets within services, so you will have seen that in the last year, 18 months, that there's been an increase in the budgets. But we still to see the real return on that in terms of efficiencies. And then community underinvestment. The community is within a block contract, which means that actually we don't get to increase what is required within the community, no matter how hard we work. So we've got that to cope with as well. We are going to exit 1617 with roughly an underlying structural deficit of about 8 million. So we've still got work to do. However, we've made some really fantastic progress. The challenge will be to continue that. So this is the progress that we've made. We've delivered our SIPs. It says circa 90%. That's to disguise the fact it's just under rather than just over 90%. <laughs> this is in fact a well done and slide. So all the black is well done and all the red is and. <laughs> so well done. We've almost done the SIP. However, we still have a non-recurrent element in that. So there's work to do and we get limited resource in place to support the delivery of it. That's a theme I'll come back to. We have overperformed on our contracts. That's fantastic. However, we're not really demonstrating that. We need to strengthen our data quality in order to strengthen that so others can understand it. Our depth of coding is not where it needs to be. It's roughly about 87%, national average is about 100 So therefore, there's more that we can do. That's just housekeeping. It's in our gift. Bank and agency spend. Our budget was 19.3 million to end the year in March. However, we are going to outturn at 19.8, which is a good effort but it's not quite where it needs to be. Non-pay controls are working very well, but there is still more to do. There's more to do on waste, and I think we heard some examples from Neil on waste. There's more to do on efficiency, more to do on procurement. The theatre and outpatient efficiency programme is in place. That will reap great dividends. Theatres that have already started, well done to the theatre teams. That's been really good work, but it still has to continue. And then benefits realisation. Historically, we've not been great at demonstrating that. We need to do better. Contract management skills. Wow, it'd be I'd love to understand how to manage a contract better. So actually, I think we need to do something about our skills. 
and capacity and capability. We need to support services better to be able to do it. So this is what we will do in 1718. We will progress our clinical strategy. Why have I got that at the top? Because actually, <coughs> money underpins our clinical strategy. If we don't get the money right, we don't get the clinical strategy right. But there's a lot in there, which is all about efficiency. Carter recommendations, procurement, pharmacy, the drugs we choose, etc. We're going to improve business as usual. So I mentioned earlier, clinical coding, waste efficiency. Move from planning, because we're really good at planning. The number of business plans where we planned and planned and planned, we're fantastic at planning, but we need to implement, create capacity in the organization to deliver. I just don't have any time, and honestly, by the time I've done 150 emails, I really don't have any time. I mean, how often do you feel that? You must feel that every day. We need to help you. We need to provide some capacity within your lives to be able to deliver this, and capability. So something there about assisting with the skills that are required so that we can deliver. So I mentioned earlier, we're linking this to clinical strategy for this transformation. We are going to invest in resources to support us. We will have a program structure that's helping us to do it right, because we need a bit of structure, don't we? Um, and we will have control over initiation of business cases so that we don't keep saying to you, could you just improve it again and again? Oh, and by the way, for the third time, it's <coughs> not the fourth. So we want to get away from that. So this gives you an idea of what it might look like. Lots of boxes, lots of people. But the key thing of this slide are the headings. So the headings aren't about money. It's, they're actually about <coughs> clinical care, beds, theatres, patient pathways, back office, which really means getting out patients, right? That's what this is about. That's what the money's about. So we have been accepted into the Financial Improvement Programme Wave 2, which is fantastic news. So we volunteered, expressed an interest to NHSI, and we were accepted. Why do we want to be in this programme? Because it will help us. It will add capacity and capability. It will help us to build our skills that we need. And the great news is we don't have to pay them if it doesn't work. So the fees are contingent on delivery. That's marvellous. I love that phrase. It's <laughs> Um, and the key thing is the transfer of skills and the buddying with other systems as well. <coughs> so something about networks, something about peer support, something about learning together. And this is just, I don't expect you to read this, just to give you an idea that this is a flow. It will happen over a period of time. It will take us months. However, <coughs> this is an incremental programme. It will take us a while to get there, but we will actually get there. So um, thank you very much. I'm very happy to go over NDA's budget sheets. <laughs> um, I'm very happy to support you with anything you need to know about finances, um, but, but maybe after the coffee break.